Today we have a box full of Blue Forest Petrified Wood and we have a handheld wet polisher. And this is going to be the best tool for you to learn how to polish petrified wood and other rocks quickly and efficiently. We'll be going through five different levels of grit today, all the way from 50 up to 3000 with 400, 800, and 1500 level grit in between. Now we have a link in the description to this wet polisher as well as these grit kits and you can find those at Amazon. Jeff Bezos, right. pay me. So if you're interested in doing this yourself, you can go to the description, find these links, and follow the instructions in this video to polish whatever you want. Joe's gonna go ahead and show you the steps he took to get this piece of petrified wood to this level polish. Take your fitty grit, you slap it on right now, and just plop her down. Right now, Joe's using a 50 grit to polish off the really uneven surfaces. Bird's gone. Towel. And that's about what it should look like after the first 50 grit. So we see we have a little bit of like some, some scratches on it and the spur is completely ground down. That's where that was. And then we switch up to the 400 grit. And I usually put them face, whoops, face up so I know that I've done them. And checking the polish after the 400 grit's done is pretty important because you don't want any of the deep, deeper scores from the 50 grit to still be there or else they're gonna show up after that. But it looks like we've got a pretty flat even polish. I don't see any major scratched up areas. It's a little cloudy still, but there might be some little scratches right there. That might have just been a little flaw in the sanding disc, but those will buff out. We get up to the, there you go, keep that dry. Get up to the 800. You want to be firm, but not like press it too hard. Just keep it on top of it. You want to actually let the sander do the work. Except on the first the first one, the 50 grit, you want to really like get into it. But this is a glass table, so don't don't get into it too much. Yeah. We're up to the 800 grit, so we should start seeing the beginnings of like a mirror polish on this stuff. When you dry it off. Just like the beginnings of a mirror polish. Yeah, see, it's pretty reflective. There are no obvious scratchy areas. That's pretty impressive. With the contour polisher, you can do that in just the, uh, was what, five minutes? Yeah, you can doesn't get take a long. Slight mirror polish you don't really minutes. have to do the 3000 grit, I don't think, because of how hard this stuff is, but I just do it to make sure that it's, you know, truly reflective and bright. Now we're gonna do 1500. Over. I am soaked. Okay, now we should have a really good mirror polish. Let me see that cloth real quick. Check it out. I peed my pants. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> and yeah, it's pretty, pretty good. It's a little cloudy, but that's why we use the 3000 grit. Should be perfectly reflective after the 3000 grit. And I don't see any obvious big circular scars anywhere, so the 800 grit got rid of the last of the 50 grit scratches. But if you have like deep scratches or something, just go down a grit the camera to like I, 200 or 100. The camera face liner keeps finding Shay. It's the Geico Caveman. We I'm know, we just established shot. it's the Geico Caveman. I'm gonna get shot one day wearing this stupid shirt. We support the Geico Caveman, not Shay. Geico Caveman, that's our man. Free Cuba and all that stuff. Now I'm gonna get killed by the CIA. Dry towel. It's looking pretty, Joe. Mm-hmm. Then after each after each step, you wanna just check your polish, especially on these first two grits. So you wanna 50? get rid of all of the spurs and surface irregularities with the 50 grit, and then you wanna get rid of all the 50 grit scars with the 400 grit. If you're having trouble removing it with the 400 grit, go down to the 100 or 200, but I've never had any trouble, you just press down and if there's still some little teeny tiny scars the 800 grit might get rid of it 
Um, if they're too deep, it won't, so just go back down to the 400. If you were doing like a full petrified wood stump, you'd want to start with like a 20 grit steel disc, and that would, you know, contour all the irregular surfaces down, and then do the 50, and then probably the other two grits. What's the advantage of using this over a more classical method? To polish this is wood? way quicker. <laughs> It's way quicker and it works a lot easier on these flat thingies. That thing. can also do irregular surfaces. Like I brought one piece yeah. of wood I wanted to try that's gonna be a regular, which you can't normally do on a polishing real disc. So we got one scuff mark right here and that's because this was the side with the little spur on it. It's really hard to get that completely flat and I might have dug into it with the edge of the um, polisher at 50 grit, which is probably what caused that scuff. So it didn't get hit with the other grits. But overall, that's nearly perfect. It's gonna take you three or four hours to do that whole box. I know. Especially if you wanna do both sides of all of them, I which know. I would recommend doing. So I definitely have my work cut out for me, but that is definitely worth it when you see the difference between one of these pieces of petrified wood that has gone through all different five stages of grit versus a raw piece. You can see all of the different score marks on the saw that originally cut it. If you just run your finger over it, like right there, my finger actually comes to a complete stop because there's a large piece sticking out. So we're gonna go ahead and get the 50 grit again. Start on this one, get rid of this uneven edge right here first by coming at it from the side, and then we'll polish all of this petrified wood. So two hours later, John's finally done with his first one. Now, admittedly, he did have to polish both sides of this, whereas I only had to polish one because that's like an irregular surface. But that took about 10 minutes. That took about two hours. So 10 minutes a side versus an hour per side because the first thing he did was he left the 50 grit too early and left 50 grit scars all over it. And the other thing he did was, in trying to polish down the spurs that were left from the saw, he accidentally, like, slanted it off a little bit so that this side would polish separately from this side. So what John did, he just did that right there. And then he just did that right there, basically. <laughs> Which <laughs> caused the surface to get ground down like that and like that. But you can't really tell because it's so subtle. But you can tell when you go up on higher grit because one side will get polished down really well and the other side will still be all scarred up and cloudy because you didn't get that side. So what you do is, is you go around in a circle, you go up and down with the thing, you go back and forth with the thing, and around in a circle. He also just kind of set it on there and was like, oh yeah, it'll get it. It'll get it real good. Instead of actually like firmly placing it on there and wiggling it around, he just kind of set it on there. You gotta actually apply some force to it. All right, what's your final tip for someone that's petrifying, not petrifying. All right, someone what's your who's petrifying their own wood? Yeah. Wait. <laughs> what's your final tip for someone that's polishing their own wood? Patience. <laughs> yeah, all right. Actually, no, you wanna wipe it off at the end of each step with a dry rag and check and make sure that you have the scars from the, the higher grit completely gone. You wanna make sure that the 50 grit gets the saw scars off, you wanna make sure that the 200 or 400 grit, um, if the 400 grit doesn't get it, go down to the 200 grit and then go up. I just skip up to the 400 because 400 usually gets all of the little 50 grit scars off pretty quickly. So if that doesn't really work and you still have 50 grit scars, go 50, 200, 400, 800, 1500, 3000. Which is what I should have done. Which is what you should have done, yeah. But, oh well. All right, that's it for this how-to video. If you guys enjoyed it, this is a little like bit different. Gallons of water. I did use a lot of water. It is a bit different from what we normally do, but we hope to do more how-tos in the future related to rock hounding and fossil hunting. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe to see all of our adventures. We actually have a video where we found all of this and cut it originally, so that's linked in the description below, along with items you need to do your own polishing of petrified wood and other rocks. And as always, you can learn stuff your dang self. We ain't doing no more how-to videos. This dummy keep on get digging nothing. science. But you did. I didn't do anything, man. I cut, I polished one in an hour, two hours. <laughs> two hours. But I had two sides. It's beautiful. It is gorgeous. Yeah. It's a slow process. Did Joe tell you it's a slow process? Um, 
10 minute miracle over there. I did this one in about 10 minutes. This one looks better. This well, one. Yeah, that's, that's because that's because he accidentally made it better by sloping the sides down so it gets a deeper deeper look to it. Yeah, because it's it's rounded. So he he accidentally did it right. You on purpose did it wrong. I made it. I did it quickly and efficiently. Thanks, Mike. You dummy. I did it quickly and efficiently, and it turned out very nice. So, so yours still has little 50 grit scars on it. So does yours. Eh. Yeah, yours has more. So, oh, so oh, yeah, John, yeah, yeah, John, whatever. do the rest of yours just like you did that one. It's two hours That's, a piece. Do you know how much water he just wasted? Loan him his stuff so he can waste his own water. Nah. Nah. <laughs> That's probably what's gonna happen. What? <laughs>